This is Josiah Plays Pillars of Eternity. So, I'm excited. I've been waiting for this game for about two and a half years <laughs> since I backed it on Kickstarter. And out of all the games I've played on my YouTube channel or on Twitch, this is the one that's of the most my kind of game. Like, this is the quintessential kind of game that I like. I mean, I loved the old Infinity Engine games, Baldur's Gate, Baldur's Gate 2, Icewind Dale, Icewind Dale 2, and of course my very favorite game of all time, which is Planescape Torment. Plus the other games that came along after that were sort of like those games, like Neverwinter Nights and Neverwinter Nights 2, and um, the Temple of Elemental Evil. I mean, those were a little bit different than the Infinity Engine games, but they were still had a lot of the same DNA. And then even Dragon Age Origins was kind of similar in, in many ways, but it was a little different. But um, So those are some of my favorite games of all time. I mean, that's really the kind of game that I like the most. So this is, finally we have a new, modern game made by a lot of the same people at Obsidian Entertainment, a lot of the same people that used to work for Black Isle, that made all those old amazing wonderful games that I loved so much so I'm very excited about this I'm gonna be streaming for 24 hours <laughs> starting now it's um it's a few minutes before 10 o'clock a.m. Pacific time where I am so I'm gonna to try to stream until 10 o'clock a.m. tomorrow <laughs> and we'll see what happens I mean I'll have to take little breaks obviously um, here and there but we will see what happens, but I'm excited. So the first thing I'm going to do is go in here and set some options because I like to set my options. I'm not going to restrict the stash. I am going to show that. I am going to show that. I am going to show that and that and that. Um, yes, I like all of those things. I'm gonna not have the developer commentary on for my first playthrough. I'll run it the second time through the game. Yeah, I like that. I like disable auto attack and disable party movement stop. So if I want to run away from a melee enemy that's on my ass, it, my character won't st keep stopping and like attacking them back automatically, which is annoying. So I turned those off. Screen edge scrolling. I, I turned off because I don't have my cursor bound to this screen so I can switch over to my other monitor and do stuff related to my stream if I need to. Um, Tooltip delay I've set to zero, scroll speed to 1.5. I would set the scroll speed a little bit higher, um, but I found that when I was testing this, at least I was testing with the beta client, um, the backer beta client last night. When I tried recording this with OBS at a faster scroll speed, it would like the scroll speed was too high for the OBS to handle at the bit rate that I can stream so it would get all super pixelated so I set it down to 1.5 so hopefully it doesn't do that too much area loot radius loving me some area loot max that out um, I was going to do a couple of quick rebinds of the keys I want to be able to pan the camera with WASD so like I'm going to I'm gonna need new things for wait 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 left right up down and I'm gonna need to rebind some of those things that I just unbound so f5 f8 so double speed um, I wonder if Q E is bound to take all. I don't need a binding for that really. Tab to highlight. What does space do? Oh, it pauses, right? Yeah, I, I don't want to mess with that. Okay, and then attack, I think. I'll make attack uh, Z. Do I need a binding for anything else? 
Select all this backspace. I don't really like that. Ah, oh, that's bound to toggle console. Well, I don't plan to use the console, but let me just rebind it to something just in case. Toggle console. I'll make alt plus back quote. Um, let's see. Control H to toggle the HUD. Character, formations, inventory, journal, party manager. Sounds good. I've got F5, F8 for quick save, quick load, so that's cool. Um, you know... Hmm... This is a little bit strange. Because... What I'm seeing... Well, let me just... Hold on, let me just make sure my stream is actually working. Okay, it is. Great. I was a little concerned that I was still stuck on my, like, logo page thing that I had up before. I got the game live, but I'm not. It's it's good to go, so yay. <laughs> I'm glad I'm not having too many technical problems just yet. So, um... I think we're good. We're good to go on the, on the keybinds. I'm only gonna auto-pause when hidden object found. Um... And enemy spotted. That's it. That's the only times I'm going to uh, have it auto pause at this point. We'll see if I want to change that later or whatever, but. Graphics, I think we're good to go here. I'm not gonna turn big heads on, although I might, like, a couple times just for a few minutes just to mess around. We'll see. Uh, other than that, I don't like font ligatures, they look weird. So I, I, I turned them off. Font scale I'm actually going to bring down a little bit. Let's try it at 80% and see how that goes. And I have my volume set to what I think is good, because I did some testing, like I said, last night with the backer beta client as far as recording and the volumes, and I think these volumes should be good. I have a new mic. I bought one, even though I couldn't really afford it. I'm now super broke, but... I bought a new bike. It's it's very nice. It's a Samson Meteor. I mean, it's not like as good as a Blue Yeti or something, but it was like half the price of a Blue Yeti. So, but it's still quite good. Now, it doesn't sound as good as it will because the thing is, I don't have <laughs> I do not have a mic stand at all. So, I can set the mic on my desk and it'll be much closer to my mouth, which will sound much better. But when I do that, it picks up every little vibration from typing and everything on the desk, and it sounds ho horrible. So what I have is, in classic Josiah fashion, I have it duct taped to my wall behind my monitors, which is really ghetto. Um, so it, it still sounds, I think, okay, but it uh, it's kind of far away from me, so there, it's a little e more echoey, and I had to turn the gain up on it more than maybe would be ideal. So, as soon as I can afford it, I'll get a basic, like, boom mic stand so I can have the thing, like, close to my face and I can turn the gain down on it and it will sound much better. So for now, I think it sounds okay, but it's gonna sound better in the near future. So I'm gonna start the game now, finally. I am playing on Path of the Damned, which is hard as balls. You need to understand, it's very hard. Like, hard, I played through the backer beta a couple times on hard, and I didn't find it terribly hard. It felt like the appropriate level of difficulty for a legit old-school RPG to me. Which is would be pretty hard for a lot of people, but it felt about right to me. So this is very hard. Like, I don't even know how well this is going to go. I'm not playing on Iron Man mode or Expert mode, because those are just obnoxious. So I'm going to play on... On Path of the Dam, though, which is going to be hard, which means I'm probably going to die a lot and have to re-try encounters and try all kinds of new tactics and figure out how to do stuff. But I think 
I want to do it this way so that it feels dangerous, so that I feel like I really have to take the enemy seriously and really have to put a lot of thought into my, my tactics and, and how to handle things. So, Path of the Damned it is. And I think now we have the intro to the game. Obsidian Entertainment presents Pillars of Eternity. I'm excited right now. Here we go. Are you ready? We have a camp in some ruins. Five wagons grope blindly for the path on a starless night, their master glancing ever upward to the skies for assurance that he is on the right course. A dim lantern, his only protection against the encroaching darkness. But the skies bring no comfort, shining no light, betraying no hint of what they know. The caravan carries travelers bound for the frontier hamlet of Gilded Vale, you among them where a local lord has offered land and wealth to settlers from abroad looking for a fresh start. You have taken suddenly ill, sweating and shivering, and one of the other travelers signals for the caravan master to stop on your behalf. He pulls up just in time to avoid plowing into the trunk of a fallen tree that bars the way ahead. You will go no further tonight. I will go no further tonight. I have taken suddenly ill. Okay, this is so reminiscent of like Baldur's Gate, Icewind Dale, with the chapter intros like this. Very cool. Now I'll create my character. Now, I pre-created my character last night in the backer beta client. I mean, I still have to actually do it here in this, in this client, but I mean, I know exactly the character I'm making, so I won't be faffing about for a long time in here making decisions. I'm making a female, Ocean Folk, Cypher, starting with Whisper of Treason and I Strike. I will start with, oh wait, let me, and I'm going to be from Old Valia. Now I'm going to have a 17 Might, a 3 Constitution, a 3 Dexterity, an 18 Perception, a 19 intellect and an 18 resolve. Um, I went with this because, for one thing, I decided for the first playthrough, the most important thing for me is to make a character who gets the most dialogue options. Because I love the dialogue and I like resolving things in these games through talking when possible, especially on Path of the Damned. Anytime I can avoid a fight, it will be good. So, I wanted these are the three stats that are the most used in dialogue resolve, intellect, and perception. If you have very high in all three of those, you will get lots and lots of dialogue options that you would not get otherwise. So I knew I wanted all three of those to be very high. Even though that doesn't make a whole lot of sense for for this build, for this class, or for hardly any build really, I decided I would make that sacrifice and kind of get my character a little bit combat-wise in order to be like the pro at dialogues. So that's, that's going to be the case there. Then I decided to dump everything else into Might so I could do the most amount of damage at least. So she is extremely squishy. She has a 3 constitution, which means she is not going to have very much health. Uh, her fortitude is not going to be that great. So I need to keep her out of harm's way, is the plan. Uh, and dexterity is also very low, so she's going to be slow. <laughs> um, so there will not be a lot of fast attacking. Now I plan for her to eventually use mostly guns. Um, and crossbows. Like, guns and crossbows is pretty much what she's going to use. Even though she starts off with a rapier and a, and a stiletto, she's not really going to fight with a rapier and a stiletto ever, really. She's going to use guns, pretty much. Um, guns, crossbows, maybe bows, but all ranged weapons, certainly. And I'm going to go for the more slow, heavy damage types, like, like blunderbusses and arquebuses and arbalests, because she's already going to be slow, so she might as well hit real hard with like a single shot, and then she can go back to casting her spells and stuff. Because um, the way the cipher works is you you start with a certain amount of focus, which you need to cast your spells, and then 
every time you hit with a weapon attack with this thing called soul whip that you have which causes you to glow kind of purple and your weapon does like an extra 20 percent damage and then based on the damage you deal you get more focus that you can use so if you hit real hard with like a single big shot you get a big chunk of focus and then you can cast a couple more spells or whatever so that's kind of the the plan obviously like i said i'm gonna have to keep her out of danger the best i can the two spells i picked by the way this one uh blinds and dazes enemies in an aoe and this one charms an enemy to fight on my side and the cool thing about charm in this is if there's not another enemy for him to attack a charmed foe will just stand there and hit himself <laughs> until the charm wears off which is amazing the other cool thing I found about charm is if you charm an enemy and there's no others, you can just run off and like get completely out of combat, which is really will probably be very helpful on Path of the Damned. Okay, so she's gonna be from Old Valia, plus plus one intellect. Now I did some reading and planning ahead of time. I actually have a real character concept here, because I'm a role player, I'm a nerd. And I have like a legitimate character concept, like a little background in my head for her and everything. So, I read um, in the little campaign almanac and on the wiki all about Old Valia and like what their, their personality and their culture is like and I'm going to be trying to make all of my choices in game sort of based on, on a real concept. So Old Valia is very much like Renaissance Italy, uh, or sort, of a, sort of a cross of like actual Roman Empire era Italy and and Renaissance Italy. No, I'm not playing Iron Mode. I can't I can't really handle that. The whole if you fuck up once your whole game gets deleted thing. I'm good. <laughs> like I'm not going to get 80 hours into this game and like have to restart. So Iron Man, no. I chose Dissident and bonus to stealth and lore. The three skills I'm going to focus on with this character are stealth, lore and mechanics, which conveniently Cypher gets plus one to each of those, and then I get another stealth and lore. I want lore, for one thing I get to use scrolls with lore, which would be great, but also for dialogue options. And then stealth and mechanics, this character is going to be my de facto party rogue, even though she's not actually a rogue, she's going to be the one that does all the roguing stuff, the sneaking ahead and the traps and locks and all that. That also fits with the Valia theme, because Valia is the most technologically advanced of all of the like areas in the game world. Alright, so colors. I already have my colors pre-selected. That's the appearance I'm going with. And that's the portrait. Hmm. She's gonna be feisty. I've got this. Time to see and not be seen. And I have a name picked out already. So, like a uh, legitimate RPG nerd, I uh, like looked stuff up to, to to pick out a name for my character. So I actually looked up like like Latin female names and also um, modern Italian female names. And this is the name I came up with. Now this is a really cool name because it, here's what it means. It means either either burning burning figure or serpent and what is my username fire snake Aries so Seraphina pretty much literally means fire snake um, in like old Latin and Italian it was also the name of a saint who had was very interesting um, because I kind of based my character concept and story a little bit on this saint Seraphina because she was like extremely ill um, to the point of like paralysis and like not being able to move or anything when she was a child and then she like various mir miracles were attributed to her so I had this idea that this character with her three con and three decks is like actually suffers from this like terminal sort of crippling illness so she's very frail she can't move around very good and the might of 17 you're like whoa what about that might actually when you look at might it says it represents physical and spiritual strength. So my, my thought is, hey, Shadow Ape, how you doing? In the case of this character, it's going to be like all spiritual strength. So like she draws power from her, her spirituality and her sort of 
you know, power of, of her soul and stuff, even though her body is, like, very crippled and weak. So she's going to be frail. She's going to need to be protected by other party members. But mentally, of course, she's extremely strong. I chose a female character, which I usually don't do in uh, RPGs. I almost always make a male character. Uh, I chose a female this time because I specifically wanted a female protagonist. I feel there's not enough female protagonists in games that are represented as strong, competent characters, and I wanted to play a legitimate, strong, competent female character. And she's also, I chose Ocean Folk because I think there's not enough people of colors, color represented well in games as protagonists, especially not women. So these choices were made deliberately and that's what I'm going with. So boom, there's my character, Serafina. Old Valian, Dissident, Cypher, Ocean Folk, ready to go. So now I'm gonna play, after a lot of talking. <laughs> Having played in the back of beta, wait a second, what's happening here? Okay. Mr. Froho asks, having played in the backer beta, do you think dialogue choices for Perception and Resolve greatly enhances gameplay? I want to play a monk, which means I need to get more dex constitution and not as much of the other dialogue ones. Well, I mean, it depends. The backer beta was a pretty limited slice of the game, a very small slice of the game. But from what I've seen, watching people play other parts of the game and from the backer beta, it seems like those things come up a lot in dialogue. Sometimes they allow you to avoid fights and complete quests without having to fight things. Sometimes they allow you to get extra rewards or whatever, or... I mean, I don't know what all they'll do for you. Generally, I just... In RPGs, I love to get all the dialogue options and see what kind of stuff you can accomplish. Something's going on with my OBS. I'm just watching all of a sudden as my frames drop. Uh, Alright, I guess maybe it's okay. It's looking a little dodgy. I hope my internet's not screwing up. But, um, so, greatly enhances gameplay as far as, like, from a power game perspective, as far as, like, being able to, you know, successfully complete the game and be powerful? Probably not. I mean, it's probably more worth it to get the actual stats you need for combat. Especially, if you're gonna play a monk, yeah, you gotta have high constitution. You gotta, because you're based on getting hit as a monk, so you can't have low constitution or you'll just die too fast. And again, you probably want to attack fast as a monk too, so dexterity would also be important. So, I wouldn't really recommend playing a monk and trying to make... I don't know what's going on. Like, I'm looking at my OBS thing and I'm seeing the box is turned red and the, the kilobytes per second keeps dropping really low. So I hope, like, my stream isn't going out or whatever. That would suck. But yeah, so anyway, when I decided I was going to play a heavy, heavy dialogue character and invest so heavily into those stats, I had to choose a class that I felt could manage that, that could still be good with those stats. That's why I didn't choose something like a monk or you know, any kind of melee combatant, really. Because I'm... You can play a Cypher as a melee, but this character is going to be all ranged. Because, you know, with a three constitution, <laughs> you don't want to be in melee. So, yeah. I don't know if that answers your question. Alright, Caravan Master Odema. The Caravan Master finishes addressing the group, his bushy red mustache and sagging jowls quivering, as if for emphasis. Oh, I see. Steam was downloading some stuff in the background. Fine, Steam. Just, you do your thing. That's how come my frames were dropping. Everybody stays close to the wagons, got it? Stay out of the woods, and beasts take you if you were planning a stroll through those ruins up there. He nods toward a looming black mass on the hillside. Whole area's crawling with hut-dwelling types who'd be happy to stick an axe in you for trespassing. So mind that you don't track mud on their sacred blazing rocks. Sacred blazing rocks. Okay. Tonight, everybody stays put, and in the morning, we'll get the path cleared. Gilded veils less than a day out. Understood? 
At last, the caravan master turns to you, frowning as he looks you over. Touch of the rumbling rock, could be. There's a stinging beetle around here, carries it. You'll be fine once it passes your innards. Unless you don't drink water, of course. In which case, you'll be dead in a day. There's a berry grows in these parts, small and pink. Called a springberry. About the size of a fingernail. Give you cramps if you eat it, but the frontiersmen make a tea from it. Calms the insides. Should get you through the night. You might check around, see if you can find some. Meanwhile, I'll see if we can scare you up some water. So I'm terribly sick. I gotta go get a springberry so I can I can get cured, basically. Alright. Sounds legit. I know you want to hunt before it gets much darker. But see about refilling our water first. Got a sick one here. Odema looks over his shoulder at his assistant, a lanky, intense man named Sparfell, who carries an old, sun-bleached bow. That must be hey, this guy. He looks like he's got a bow. He nods in your direction. Sparfell nods and slides the worn bow over his shoulder. So, quick bit of interesting trivia. This guy, the voice actor that's doing this, Caravan Master Odema, uh, some people may recognize his voice. He's the guy that does the voice of Snake Vargas in Wasteland 2, uh, recently released, which is another Kickstarter game that I backed. And it's kind of funny, because when you start that game, the very first thing you hear is that guy talking to you. And in this game, the first thing you hear is this guy, same, same voice actor. So this kind of starts off like uh, Wasteland 2, in a strange way. All right, where would I find these berries? What are those ruins? What are these huge rocks coming up out of the ground? Yeah, I'm curious about that. These big green... I mean, I actually know out of character what they are already, but... They don't got Audra where you come from? Well, it just grows up out of the ground like this. Goes deep like tree roots. Some of it all the way to the heart of the world, you believe the stories. The heart of the world. It's more like a shell than a proper rock. Easier to work if you're a mason. Got all kinds of strange properties. Seems to have some kind of life of its own dies if it gets dug up loses its luster folks think it probably grew at one point or another but not these days so it's some kind of living rock it's kind of like a shell apparently it's a big deal if I recall correctly the pillars of eternity which is the name of the game the pillars that it's talking about are actually pillars of Audra. This stuff. The soul butchers in Defiance Bay use it for different things. I've heard tell it can hold a man's soul, but I don't care to see it. Got enough to worry about without seeing something like that. <laughs> yeah, people's souls held in rocks doesn't sound like a good thing. Like, that doesn't sound wholesome, right? There's, <laughs> there's no way you really make, a, make that sound good. Uh, alright. What are those ruins? Nothing you won't see on half the hills of Air Glonfoth. Money to be made selling their knickknacks in Defiance Bay, if you don't mind getting stuck with Glonfoth and arrows now and again. They didn't build them, but I'll be the effigy if they don't watch them like a mother bear. So the Glonfothans, these ruins are like sacred to them and they protect them violently. Of course, all the ones around here have been ransacked ten times over. Got nothing left worth half a pond, so I hear. Pond, I think, is the standard copper coin of the realm. Um, I'm not necessarily going to read the tutorials because they... Well, what the hell, I'll read the tutorials, why not? Your character's attributes, skills, class, race, culture, and sex may all open up options for you in die. Oh. Alright, I guess it doesn't want me to read the tutorial, it just went away on its own. Um, Alright, well, who did build the ruins? See, I I'm kind of want to play this character as being very curious, and sort of... Um, like, interested in, in history and philosophy and intellectual things, so... I'm asking these questions about, like, the ruins and the rocks, like, even more so than asking questions that relate to, like, her personal situation. 
Who did build the ruins? Got different names for them. Settlers called them Inguithans. Nobody that liked them enough to stop them becoming ruins, tell you that much. Inguithans were the ones who built the things, and now Glonfathans. I gotta, I gotta try to remember pronunciations when I hear the voice actors say them, because I'm gonna have to read these words a lot during the game, so I don't remember how to pronounce them. Inguithans, Glonfathans. Audra, got it. Nobody that liked them enough to stop them becoming ruins tell you that much. Right, so the people that built these must have disappeared or died off or fell into decline or left and abandoned them. Who knows? I think we'll learn these things in the course of the game. Uh, is it dangerous out here? Not if you hurry about your business. And not if the weather holds up. There is concern in his tone. But he does not elaborate. Should I try to do a voice for my character? <laughs> I'm embarrassingly bad at doing voices. So she's from basically a Italian sort of place, but not quite like Italian, more like a, an ancient sort of Italian. Uh, curiosity killed the cat, but satisfaction brought it back, says Shadow Ape 34. Makes sense. I might just try to do some generic, slightly exotic sounding voice for my character that will probably have nothing to do with any real world accent. What kind of weather do they get out here? This time of year, rain mostly, and wind. But there's a different kind of wind out here time to time. Locals call it a beowick, born out of the ether. The spirit's path. Never seen it myself. Never care to. Hmm. A beowick. Well, that doesn't sound like a good thing to get stuck in. <laughs> okay, Mr. Fro. Immersion mode on. Where would I find these berries? They grow on a bush that's common around here. Kind of funny looking. You'll know it when you see it. Doubt you'd have to go far off the road to find one. I'll go see about those berries, then. Hold on. Take someone with you. I know you're not some helpless tenderfoot. Not like most of this lot. But you drop dead, I don't want to be looking for the body. Got a schedule to keep. He scans over the travelers, resting his eyes at length on a sturdy, armor-clad woman who has spent the journey's nights... ...sleeping on uneven ground without blanket or pillow. Well, she's a woman with kind of a husky voice, all right? I mean, I'm not gonna be like... Well, I mean, for some characters, I will absolutely try to raise my voice and sound like in a more of a falsetto, but not for my main character. Okay. She spent the journey's night sleeping on uneven ground without a blanket or pillow, so she's pretty tough. Kalisha. Kalisha! The woman looks up on her own time. She needs to find some spring berries. Watch that she doesn't drop dead. I will attempt to semi-match the, the accents of voice actors when I can, but I'm not very good at it, so I probably won't really sound anything like the actual voice actors. No promises. What kind of guide says something like that? Kind you can afford. <laughs> She's got sass, too. Don't listen to her. You're in good hands. And I pay too well, if anything. Odema chuckles and shakes his head. He looks at you. He casts a sidelong glance at her. I don't think he probably pays too well. Off with you. Pay it in should have supplies. See that you're equipped before you head out. We're in harsh country. Get your berries and hurry back. And if you get so much as a tickle of wind, you drop everything and you run. Something in the air tonight. If it's a beowick, we'll shelter in the ruins. Hut dwellers be damned. So a Beowick is serious business, if we're willing to risk the wrath of the uh, Glonfathans to shelter from it. Odema's small grin recedes beneath his mustache, and he is stern once more. I feel like Obsidian has the best writers in the, in the game business. I mean, this game is going to have a lot of really good writing. 
You heard the man. Let's get going before you keel over. Alright. Now everybody wanders off. So I can zoom in a fair amount. Now this is... Oh yeah, cool. I have this rebound to WASD. That's awesome. Um, like I said in the beginning, I would have... Uh, your party always consists of your character and up to five additional companions or adventurers, while the caravan is camped outside the Glanfothed ruins. Odema has assigned Kalisha to help you. Kalisha is a fighter, a class that excels at close quarters defense. Use your abilities to complement your own. That's good, because I need a bodyguard for this character. Select a party member. Actually, I'm not going to read these, because I already know all this stuff. Okay. Um... I am going to change the shape of this box a bit. I might actually, when I was playing the backer beta, sometimes I did it like this. I kind of had it all the way over. I don't know, I'll probably move it around a bunch depending on whether it's in the way. So you can zoom out a little further and zoom in a little closer than you could uh, at least a couple backer beta versions ago. The game doesn't look quite as good if you zoom all the way in, um, but you can see more details and stuff. And of course, I'm not really going to be zoomed all the way in very often because you see a much smaller part of the screen. So for now, I'll be somewhere in the middle here. No problem. Okay, so I might have set my font scale a little bit too low. Those, I mean, I can read that text okay, but it probably looks very small on the screen. Let me just kick it up to, like, 90. Yeah, that's better. That's better. Okay. So, you can see that Kalisha has, like, twice as much, literally twice as much endurance and health as me. More, more than twice as much health. Hmm. Can I talk to her straight out the gate? Springberries grow wild all over the place here. Keep your eye out. She's very focused on the task hmm? at hand. Springberries grow wild all need? over the place. She's here. got a couple knocked out. out. Okay. Um. So this is the inventory interface. It's my character, and there's Kalisha. She's got some scale armor. Now, I started with male armor, but I'm not going to wear that, because as slow as I am, I do not need to be slowed down anymore. I'm just going to need to get some regular clothes, which I believe there's some in a crate over here. I was watching somebody else's. Let's just... My eyes are peeled. Oh, yeah. Scouting mode. I'm going to be in scouting mode basically all the time, because it's how you find hidden objects and traps. But what I will do is... I'll put it in fast mode so that even though I'm in scouting mode, at least they won't move too slow. I think there might be some clothes in here. I, or I'm wrong. That's the other possibility. Anyone need supplies? I've got sundries for sale. So, if I hit tab, you see everything lights up here that I can interact with. These tall glass green pillars appear as if they have sprouted from the earth. The flickering fire sets shadows dancing within. It's very descriptive. Let's see. Yes, I'm going to take everything there is to take. I have the mechanic skill to unlock that. I'm assuming uh, these people in the caravan want me to take this stuff. Otherwise, why would it be... Caravan life doesn't agree with you, does it? You look as raw as that merchant Heodan. All kinds of beasts in these woods. And then you have the tribes. Ooh. There we go, there's some clothes. So now this is just regular clothing. It has no damage reduction and no speed penalty. So this isn't armor, it's just clothing. Um, although most deer woodens originated in the Adir Empire, deer wooden clothing has changed a great deal since the initial waves of colonization. Deer woodens favor 
tough garments, often made from wool and deer skin. Due to the changing weather of the Eastern Reach, vests and other layers are common in deer wooden daily outfits. So, let's throw that on. There we go. Now she's dressed and not slowed down by armor. That's good. And then I can sell this mail armor. Actually, is that better than... It is better than what she's wearing. Alright, good. I can give it to her. And I'll sell the other stuff. What do we got here? Potion of Minor Regeneration. Okay, restore some endurance over time. These blue-green liquids are attributed with powers of recuperation, restoring energy and liveliness to the weary or morose over a period of time. And what about this one? This one just gives you 60 straight up. This vibrant purple potion has an equally apparent effect. For imbibing it immediately grants a rush of energy, restoring vitality and briskness to even the most haggard and weary of travelers. That's what I need is some briskness. When I'm getting like my face gnawed off by like, a giant demon wolf, I'm like, yeah, ah, need some briskness. And then I drink that and I'm good to go. Like, that's brisk, baby. <laughs> it's it's Lipton brisk. All right. Some of those old brisk commercials with like Bruce Lee, but like fucking <laughs> Pillars of Eternity edition. All right. I think my tank is going to need those. Well, all right. I'll put this one on her in case she needs it. I'll put the bigger one on the tank. What she got here? She doesn't have a shield. She has a battle axe and a torch. Now, the torch is kind of cool because it actually burns things. Um, although not especially effective in combat, torches can be used to illuminate dark environments. I think it seems like it'll be pretty effective because it'll, it'll burn things. And she has a battle axe, which gets a bonus to crit damage, which is quite nice. Capable of delivering powerful blows from their broad, curved blades. Battle axes are commonly used by soldiers throughout the Deerwood and Air, how do you say it? Air? Air Glanfath, right? I think so. Alright, so she's equipped. She has my male armor that I gave her. Male armor is quite popular for its protective qualities, especially against slashing attacks. Male is comprised of thousands of small rings of steel that form a flexible mesh. In case you've never played any sort of fantasy medieval based RPG or other game or like watched any movies or read any books. This is what mail is. It's composed of little rings. Really? Tell us more. Normally worn over a padded jacket, mail protects well but restricts its wearing combo. Yeah, minus 45% recovery speed is quite a lot. Um, but she, all that protection will be quite good. Not so good against crushing, but real good against slashing and then decent against everything else. Versus the scale armor, which sucks versus pierce, good versus freeze and slash. But it's not as much as the uh, as the mail. Scale armor is made of overlapping small plates of metal or horn sewn to a leather backing. It offers a balance of protection and speed. All right, yeah, we're gonna sell it. So I'm just kind of checking out what she can do here. That shows her damage with each of her weapons. That shows her accuracy with each of her weapons. Damage reduction 9, 14 slash 5 crush. I have no damage reduction. These are the defenses. 29 deflection. You notice my deflection is very good. It's 36. I mean, it's it's like higher than the fighters. And fighters are supposed to have very high deflection. Because I have 18 perception and 18 resolve. And both of those stats add to deflection. So even though she's very weak, you know, as far as health. And she doesn't have any armor on. Her actual deflection, which is like your chance to not get hit, is is good. So she'll have a chance, a better chance to be missed by enemies, which is nice. 4220, very low. Hers is very high. That's really resistance to like poison, disease, and like knockdown and stuff like that. Reflex 22, not so great. Hers is 24, also not so great. Her will though is insane. 54 is really high, like for a first level character. So any kind of mind affecting attacks are gonna pretty much not do very good against her, which is good. So she has an iron will. Kalisha, not so much. Uh, let's see. This is all the stuff. I have two lore so I can use scrolls. 
I got two in stealth and I have one in mechanics so I can disable some basic traps and locks. What does Kalisha have going on? So she has high might, not that high con honestly. 10 dex, 12, 12, 12. She's, her stats are kind of mediocre really. Um, she's got a little bit of athletics, she's also got two lore and she's got some survival abilities. So she will regenerate constantly in combat. All fighters get that. This is the racial ability. Both of us have this. Under 50% endurance, you get a bonus to accuracy and damage. And she's got that cool knockdown ability, which lasts 5.5 seconds of prone. Prone's amazing. When you prone an enemy, which is not really, you shouldn't really say prone an enemy, because that's not really. But anyway, when you knock an enemy prone, they can't do anything, and they have penalties to their defenses. Dex is reduced by two, reflex and deflection are re So knocking enemies prone is amazing. She can do that twice every encounter. So there we go. I have... Oh, good. And you can see that. So the green bar on the left is their actual health, which is your long-term damage. When your actual health runs out and then you get dropped again, you die. Um, the other thing is endurance, which is a much smaller number. That's the 48 and the 24. That's what you lose in combat. And when that runs out, you go unconscious. And for every so, so many points of endurance you lose, you lose a point of health. So it's basically how that, how that works. I've traveled with Odema before. He's never led us astray. Well, I think he led us astray this time. I'm just saying. I see more and more people on the roads these days, looking for safety in towns and cities, it seems. You notice these interactables, now that I've taken all the stuff out of them, they show up in this sort of pale uh, color instead of the nice blue showing, hey, there's stuff in here. Don't mind Odema, this is as good a place to camp as any. Alright. Let's see here. Yeah, I'm talking to all the people. It's best not to wander alone, especially so near the ruins. Caravan life doesn't agree with you, does it? You look as right. Hey, somebody already said that to me. Don't use the same line, sir. All kinds of... Yeah, I think they're starting to... Re I suppose you wouldn't know much about Glanfothans. They're mighty protective of places like this. But they don't look so good. Odemo was right to stop. So, like... The lighting, pretty nice. You can actually see the torchlight on the characters. Caravan guides. All right, they're saying the same stuff. Go on then, before it gets too dark. All right, I'll go. It looks pretty dark. I don't know how much darker it's gonna get, sir. Okay. Is there anything else to steal over here? I already looted that. Okay. Uh, here's Heodan. He, this guy I can buy and sell from, apparently. You see a man wearing simple but mostly neat clothes. He's transfixed, however, by a ragged tear in the seam of his tunic. Brought a whole wagon full of goods to sell, but not enough shirts for the road. He's having shirt problems. He shakes his head and laughs when he notices you. He scratches one cheek with his knuckles. It's covered with uneven stubble, as if he hasn't quite gotten used to shaving on the road. Hmm. So he's not used to the traveling life, apparently. Say, is there anything you need? I've got some basic traveling supplies for sale, if you'd like to take a look. Who are you? I'm a trader, originally from the Adir Empire. But I've been trying to establish new business out here. Life on the road has brought some unexpected challenges, to be sure. And I'm sure you've noticed how prickly the locals can be. But we're here to make the most of things, right? Uh, okay. He's a traitor. Might as well try out that look like that. I'm sure you'll do well. Ghost Caravan. Going with clever. Because cleverness and wit are uh, part of the things that are important to people from Valia, as I learned in my reading. <laughs> There's like ten of these of these personality trait things. Passionate, clever, cruel, and there's like seven others. 
And what happens is, every time you pick a choice with that after it, you build up a little bit of a reputation toward that trait. And sometimes, in dialogue, people will react to you different because of that, or you'll have different dialogue. I remember one point in the backer beta where, like, you wanted to say something honest, but in order to pick that dialogue option, you had to have, like, level 2 honest uh, reputation already. And there was another one, too, with, like, one of the other... Um... So, basically, choosing those builds up the personality of your character as far as how you can express yourself and how you're perceived. I've sort of decided for this character that I'm going to prioritize compassionate, or, or what's it called? Um, benevolent? as like the main one, and honest, and clever, and and passionate kind of last, but, so, I'm going with clever this time, if you, if you think these caravanners are prickly, watch out for those axe wielders Odema mentioned. He laughs. That's excellent advice indeed. Here we go, it's explaining what I just said. One rank and a disposition reputation. These reputations represent how people perceive your personality throughout the world. Even seemingly nasty reputa reputations will be favored by some people, and benign reputations often bring out the worst in certain people. No disposition is inherently good or bad in Pillars of Eternity, but if your main character is a priest or paladin, you must be careful not to misalign their dispositions with what is favored by their deity and order, respectively. For the main character only, their dispositions will modify the effects. Okay, that's for priests and paladins. Got it. So there you go. So benevolent is going to be the main one I focus on. Whenever I get a chance to be benevolent, I will. Secondarily honest. Tertiarily that might not be a word. Clever and then passionate uh, last. So he laughs. That's excellent advice indeed. Something else you need? Looks like we're settled for the night. Why'd you move? Why'd you move all the way out here? Because it seemed friendlier than Raid Saris. <laughs> My brothers took over the family mercantile business a few years ago, and there wasn't enough for me to do back home. I moved out to try and expand. Raid Saris. Hmm. I don't know where that is. He shrugs. Deerwood is a former Adia colony, so it seemed like a good place to start. And as much as I admire the Raid Saren's work ethic, they've always struck me as a little fanatical. Sounds, reason sounds reasonable enough. Out here, I'm just taking it one day at a time. Tell me about the Adir Empire. It's not as big as it used to be, but it's still big. The mainland is a continent northwest of here. The colonies used to include Rayad Saris and the Deerwood. About 150 years ago, Deerwood won its independence from the Empire. In fact, our companions are quick to remind me of. He gives you a lopsided grin and nods at the other scattered caravanners. Alright, so Deerwood's got a kind of a... Um... <laughs> hey, Ingrid. Hi. Welcome to the stream. Yeah, I'm trying to do voices and stuff, so it's going to be pretty ridiculous. Why does writing have to be so stressful? Well, I, I don't know. I mean, basically, you just got to do the best you can and, you know, turn it in. See what happens. So I'm getting this thing of Deerwood being a little bit like America, like the United States. They they kind of broke off from this from this more powerful empire, which was the Adirian Empire, and now they've kind of got this scrappy. We just won our independence, and you know, kind of a colonial American sort of vibe to them. In before you drop the Swedish Indian. <laughs> The Swindian, yeah, I'm uh, my Swedish Indian accent is amazing. I don't even know if the people that watch this are worthy of hearing it. It's so good. Um, let's see what you've got. Okay. First things first. Oh yeah, stores. Yeah, I know. Thank you, tutorial. Uh, I'm gonna sell this for 150 copper. That's cool. That'll more than double my money. Alright, good. Now, what can I buy? 
Oh, it's gonna be like that, huh? That's a very expensive potion. Lock picks. Ooh, I want those. Those are not cheap. These slender steel tools can be used to assist in opening a variety of locks. If a lock is slightly outside the range of a picker's expertise, some lock picks may be sacrificed in the process of opening it. Wait, so what did you go with? Bible thump emote. What the hell's the Bible thump emote? Like, what is that even supposed to be? What do you mean, what did I go with? I don't want any of these armors. I could get a shield for Kalisha instead of that torch. It seems like not a terrible idea, actually. A bigger shield. A shieldier shield. Yeah, I said a shieldier shield. I am playing on Path of the Damned. So, combat's gonna be hard as balls. So yeah, I should really get her a shield. Give me the shield. I think as far as weapons now, I would love to have a crossbow for my main character. And... That's it. So what I'll do now... I don't have anything in my stash yet. Oh, class-wise. Well, I explain all my thinking on my character in the very beginning, but basically I went with a cipher. Not basically I went with a cipher. I, did, I went with a cipher. There's no basically to it. I'm a cipher. <laughs> Human, ocean folk, old valian, cipher. With stealth, mechanics, and lore as my skills that I'm going to focus on. So now, let's come down here. Hmm. I might just have her use the torch instead of the battle axe. It does less damage base, but it has that burning lash. Nah, eh, let's not be silly. I'm gonna keep the torch as my secondary weapon. So I'm gonna use this crossbow. Get rid of these. Get get off me. Okay. Oh, uh, no, you don't have to feel bad for not being here. I'm just saying, like, if you watched the little bit of the VOD in the beginning, I go through a pretty lengthy explanation of my character and why I made the choices that I did and what my character concept is and stuff. Good morning, old man blue. Hello. It is not the spoon that bends. It is only yourself. Yes, that is a great line from The Matrix. I quote that myself. on a Well... I was going to say a regular basis, but I guess it's not that regular, but once in a while. And I've got some lockpicks. I'm going to sell this rapier and stiletto because I don't need them. Switch to new weapon sets. Yeah, yeah, I know. See, hmm. so now she could switch to that torch. Like, if I need a yeah. torch for some reason, she's got one. But otherwise, she's going to use the crossbow. Mm -hmm. And Kalisha's got her shield now, which puts her defense up to 41, which is good. She needed a higher deflection. All right. Uh, let's just quickly... Something else you need? Looks like we're settled for the night. Or are we? I'm just going to sell those. Now I have 69 copper left. I go live in an hour-ish and saw you online and wanted to come hang out. Cool. Well, hey, it's good to see you. I hope your stream goes well today. I'm going to be streaming this game for 24 hours. <laughs> That's going to go so well. Because after about hour 15, I'm going to start getting silly. Uh, I do not have a regular schedule, no. 
I just kind of stream whenever. Something else you need? I don't do well with regular schedules, like as a general rule. So I'm discovering that I don't really like tab being my key for this. So I'm going to keybind that to alt. I don't really need it. Well, then I do want a key for toggling scouting, actually. Let's see. What is what is C bound to? Oh, no, I like C on character sheet. If you're still streaming when I finish, I'll host you and bring you some friends. Hey, hey thanks, man. That'll be awesome. That'll be very good. Um... We'll go with left control. How about that? Stay quiet. Cool. I don't think this alt worked for the. It obviously didn't because I'm pressing alt and it's not highlighting anything. What the problem is, game? What the problem is? No, it still does not want to do it. It's like, nope. Really? Quickly and quietly. You're 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 really not making me super thrilled right now. Maybe I can Hold on. And mm. Okay. Like I want to I want to scroll the thing with WASD and then but then holding tab and do well, I guess it doesn't matter. By the end of my shows, I don't have many, but should be around 20 or so. I'm not a big streamer yet. Well, you're a much bigger streamer than I am. Like, if I have five viewers at once, I'm excited. I'm like, oh my god, what's going on here? <laughs> did I... Did I just make it so that I can't... Quickly and quietly. Hmm, so the key bindings are not exactly working perfectly at this point. Alright, well... You love that attitude. What attitude? Horses. I found horses. <laughs> That's the way I started out. I was like, I have three people watching me start dancing in my seat. Yeah, right? Like, like, we'll see. I'm still primarily recording these for YouTube, my YouTube channel. So if I happen to have viewers while I'm live streaming, that's like a bonus. But like, what do you mean by not being able to hold alt? I don't understand. Well, no, see, holding alt's easy, but holding tab while also WASDing is not as easy. I mean, I don't have to constantly WASD, but see, I had to turn it, screen edge scrolling off so that, because that way I can put my mouse over to my other monitor and um, click on stuff on it if I need to with like the stream and everything. Um, so I have to use keys to, to move the camera. And I don't know. I wish I could just toggle interactables on all the time. Oh, that would probably be obnoxious. Do I plan on using a cam? Um, not any time in the immediate future, no. Sometime, maybe, if I, if I get, you know, more regular viewers and they want me to or whatever, then I will, I will consider doing it. But at this point, I don't own any sort of webcam, and um, I'm not 
in a real hurry to get one. Orland's Cradle was added to the stash. Oh, really? Tell me more. What'd I find? Some kind of mushrooms. Named by Raid Saren settlers who came upon the mushrooms in the forest, this thick, flat fungus grows along the base of large trees. So these will be for crafting. There is a, there is a, a crafting system in this game where you can make all sorts of potions, scrolls, and then the, in addition to that, you can also enchant your items. Um, you know, your weapons and your armor. And they require different ingredients, right? So like, one of these probably requires those mushrooms I just found. And of course, they don't. <laughs> but it sounded good. I can even enchant my clothes. They require like every other kind of plant. Oh, there we go. See, if I want perception on my clothes, I've got to have one of those Orleans cradles. So there, there you go. So there's all kinds of enchants you can put on your, on any piece of like clothing or armor and your weapons. And then in addition to that, you can make, you make food out of like food ingredients that you find. You can make different potions and scrolls and so yeah, so collecting that stuff will actually be very important, especially on Path of the Damned, where I am going to need consumables and stuff probably pretty badly. You know, you could always duct tape your phone to your screen. Well, as it turns out, I've done that. <laughs> That's how I made all of my vlogs on my YouTube channel, was by duct taping my phone to my screen and recording with it. But you can't, you couldn't use that for a stream. That crafting system seems to really endorse hoarding. You are so right, and I am the hoarder. Of course, in this game, hoarding is... You have unlimited stash space. I mean, it looks like it's limited, but it actually isn't. If you fill all of this up, a little scroll thing will appear, and you'll get more room. And you can access this stash from anywhere. I can put stuff in it. I can take stuff out of it anywhere I want. I don't have to go to a certain location. So, a friend of mine was doing Twitch shows with his phone. Seriously? I wouldn't. I don't even know how you would set something like that up to to um, be able to stream video from your phone. Okay. See now my characters are hidden. Nobody knows they're there. So now as I get closer, wait. Kalisha doesn't have stealth, right? No, she has no stealth. As I get closer to the horses, you see she got detected like right away by the horses. Whereas my character actually didn't, because my character is a pro at stealth. So so slowly okay. the yellow is filling up, and once the yellow fills up, then they start like investigating for you. And once the red fills up, then they've actually spotted you. So you see how slow it fills up. As I get closer to them, it fills up faster. Um, mm -hmm. But like for Kalisha with zero stealth. They detect her very quickly, even when she's eh? further away, so that's how stealth works. And I'm going to keep raising my stealth skill on my main character, because I want her to be my stealthy scout. The fallen tree doesn't budge. Not Sap. looking forward to trying to lift that thing tomorrow. Yeah, apparently we're going to have to lift that. Well, y'all are going to have to lift it. i got important cipher stuff to do. The fallen tree doesn't budge. Sap oozes from the jagged wound in its trunk. I wonder if this tree was felled on purpose to stall our progress. Dun dun dun! Conspiracy. He has a real webcam now. I think he was shamed into it. <laughs> well, yeah, that sounds pretty ridiculous. Um, I have to be careful. You know what I need to do? It's quick save. Because. I could, seriously, any fight could be totally fatal to me at this point. Because not only are we first level and weak, and there's only two of us, but also it's on Path of the Damned, which is no joke. Can I... I can't... There's my homie Heo down. Exploration is key as you make him. Yeah, yeah. I know. I get it. There's a map. Who's this guy? Oh, that's Sparfell. That's the dude that was supposed to go out and get us water or something. 
So, in order to find hidden objects, and there's quite a few hidden objects in this game, you have to be in scouting mode, which I'm in. And that's also the mode that you use to not be detected immediately by enemies. If I wasn't in scouting mode, like the second an enemy appeared on my map, they would see me and like come attack. Whereas as it is now, that won't happen. Because I'm... It's a deer. Oh, see, the deer detected her and immediately ran off. If I was uh, if I was scouting yeah. by myself, I probably could have snuck up on that deer. And the deer is gone. It's just like, nope. I wonder if you get something for killing that deer. Oh, you don't understand what take it slow means until you see me play an RPG. Okay, I've been playing for like an hour and a half and I haven't even fought anything yet. I'm in the f first little tiny area and I haven't even fought anything yet, so come on. Ooh, stuff. Also, I'm gonna read everything, and by read everything I mean even the description of all the items. I found some leather armor. What do we know about leather armor? Well, let's see. It's stiffer and more durable than ordinary hide armor. Leather armor is shaped and boiled in oil to achieve its distinctive finish and toughness. Leather armor is often chosen by adventurers who want a balance of protection and speed. Yeah. Okay. Did I tell you about my... No, no it wasn't this one. The other potion, that it, it restores your briskness. It's a potion of briskness, so if you're not feeling brisk enough, that's what you need right there. Crowfall ended up doubling their original goal. That's awesome. That looks like it's going to be a very cool game. Please don't think I'm trying to tell you how to do your show, but if you need any help, please don't hesitate to ask. You have a great voice and amazing personality. Well, thank you. That is an amazing compliment. I really appreciate it. You you seem like kind of a pro streamer. I mean, like, you, you're kind of new to it, and you maybe don't have a huge audience yet, but you've really got your shit down. Like, you're very professional-seeming setup and everything, so I think you're going to be... You're going to be pretty huge. Me, I'm a lot more casual and just kind of amateur about it. The corpse is cold to the touch and a ripe smell wafts from it in putrid waves. A dark, crusted bloodstain besmirches its simple linen clothing. See, they don't mess around. They put some writing into even these little descriptions. So, don't know what happened to these people, but... See, I remember fast mode being a lot faster than this. Slow mode, of course, very slow. That's normal mode. Either they slowed down scouting mode movement or they slowed down fast mode. Because I think in the backer beta I could scout around in fast mode uh, well, quicker than this, I guess. You're jelly of my energy. Well, um, I don't know what that means exactly you seem to have lots of energy when you do your streams I don't know I mean you're very active in communicating with the people and talking about stuff and okay here we go we got a bridge a bridge feels ominous I'm f5ing and there will be save scumming in this like I will save scum like a mug too if a conversation doesn't go the way I like it, I will reload. If... Ooh, tab key, a highlight. Thank you for telling me about that now that I've done it like a hundred thousand times. You hear that sound effect of the water? Yeah, you do not have a face for a radio DJ. You could be a television host of some kind. You're not ugly, man. Um, I actually uh, worked in radio a little bit too myself a long time ago when I was a teenager. Save scum like a nug, you mean? Yes, like a nug. This is recent. Not good. So there was a camp here, and I don't see any dead bodies or anything. I do see a bottle that we can. Ooh, beer. 
What is beer? Let's find out. While few foreigners have much kind to say about the beer in the Deerwood, where locals prefer to indulge in narcotics, beer is still a staple of every inn, home, and drunken feud. So if I drink this, you get plus one damage reduction for five minutes. And then the cool thing is, um, with her survival skill, she gets plus 10% consumable duration, so she would actually get it for 330 seconds. Yeah, you can, they, you, they didn't used to let you zoom in this much um, during the backer beta because it just doesn't look quite as good, but then people demanded it, so they made it so you can zoom in a little more, even though it, it makes the game look a little worse if you zoom in all the way. Uh, yeah, see, that's part of why I'm not trying to really get on cam right away either, because, you know, right now I'm just still trying to get comfortable with the idea of playing a game and talking to people live at the same time, you know, and dealing with that. Having to, like, think about, you know, what I'm doing physically at the same time would be, would be a little more than I'm ready for at this moment. So beer, get in my quick slot. You never know when right in the middle of battle you need to quickly drink a beer. <laughs> the footprints around the campfire are indistinct and may have been here for days or longer. Hmm. Okay. Would you look at this? See, I found a hidden object. Boom. Hidden object found. Now, to find hidden objects, not only do you have to be in scouting mode, but you also have to have a high enough mechanic skill. Yeah. So my character only has a mechanic skill of one, but since this is the starter map, that's probably high enough to find anything. But like later in the game, if you don't raise your mechanic skill, you will not find some of the hidden objects, even if you are in scouting mode. But I get, oh, I got the disappointer! It's all about the disappointer. Oh, you know, no, no need to be sorry. Go ahead and share your favorite ma Matrix quote. I love the Matrix and quotes thereof. Okay, here we go. This is awesome. This is kind of a joke item. I saw it in somebody else's stream. The Disappointer. It's a pistol. It was touted as a powerful, reliable weapon, but it has consistently failed every one of its unfortunate owners. This is a terrible weapon that disappoints anyone who uses it. The gun appears well made at first glance, but closer scrutiny reveals poor design and shoddy craftsmanship. Those who aren't fooled by its appearance still occasionally attempt to use it, just to see if maybe the whole thing was made to look this way as an elaborate ruse, hoping that it is an artifact of extreme power crafted by a master who desired to conceal its remarkable nature. It wasn't. And it isn't. <laughs> I love this. I'm probably going to use it. Wait, let's see how terrible is it. It's very slow. It does decent damage, I guess. Um, but it has minus 5 accuracy. Then it has minus 8 accuracy on top of that. A reduction in damage. Yeah, it's... Wow. The Disappointer. Um... So, let's say I use the Disappointer. I mean, it looks pretty cool. It's a pistol. Let's see. My damage goes to 19 to 26. Not as good as my crossbow. My accuracy goes way down. So basically, there's no reason I should ever use this, except for the 6 DR bypass, which means damage reduction. So if I was fighting an enemy that had high piercing damage res resistance, it could actually be literally use worth it to use this, but I probably won't, other than just as a joke. Although, no problem. it is kind of cool to have a pistol. That, okay, you do not carry a crossbow like that. What is going on there? That's not how that works. That's not how crossbow carrying works. 
<laughs> Come on, lady. Where's the pistol now? It, okay, it's kind of in a reasonable place. Do you hear that, Mr. Ares? That is the sound of inevitability. Oh yeah, Agent Smith. Man, I love him. Hugo Weaving's so amazing. Can't stand Keanu's typecast acting, but I love the movies he's in. You got the new desk and all the acoustic panels yesterday. Got the desk built in half. That sounds amazing. And a whole new overlay for the sea. You are so professional. Let me let me show you how. Like this is how ghetto I am. Just today, just this morning, I made a screen for when I go away on a break from the and I keep streaming. Here we go. You ready for this? Boom. That's my be right back screen. Is that not the most professional thing you've ever seen? <laughs> okay. All right. I'm back. So, yeah, let's go on with our lives here. Yeah, it's super awesome. It's not adorbs. It is not adorbs. I've seen things before that are adorbs, and this is not one of them. It's, it's like, ridiculous. Ridiculous. It's sort of terrible looking. Okay. So, that will be an end to this first episode of the Pillars of Eternity playthrough. Uh, I will be still streaming, of course, after this. I'm just ending a, an episode of the recording and starting a new one. So, this has been Josiah Plays Pillars of Eternity.